Hare Krishna. Why was Balaram so kind to Duryodhan and so harsh to Romaharshan? Answer, when we contemplate or analyze the examples of the great souls, and here Balramji is non different from Krishna, so he is not just a great soul, the greatest soul. At that time, we need to know what approach we are taking and whether that approach is valid. As even a Western thinker said, that consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. That means that we may expect a person to be consistent in their, in their conduct all the time, but they may be teaching different lessons at different times. And that's why even about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and about great souls in general, it is said in the Chaitanya Charitamra that Kusumadapi Komalam and Vajradapi Kathoram. Sometimes they are gentler, softer than a lotus and sometimes they are harder, harsher than a thunderbolt. Why? Because there are different contexts, there are different individuals, there are different lessons being taught. So comparing two distinct pastimes uh, and trying to look for consistency in the character or the quality being, is being exhibited may may not work. We can look for consistency in the benevolence. The Lord is omnibenevolent. He's Surudam Sarvabhutanam. He wants the good for all living beings. But the way he executes it may be different. It's like, uh, uh, let's consider specifically these two actions. So, now with respect to Duryodhan, why was the Lord so kind to him? Firstly, it's not because of Duryodhan's qualification. It is because of Balram's compassion. The idea is that the Lord can be causelessly merciful to anyone. And even to the unqualified. Now we may say, okay, he may be unqualified, he can be merciful. But what about when somebody is against Krishna and Krishna's devotees? Why would Balram be merciful to such a person? Balram trained Duryodhan in mace fighting and that's how he is known as Duryodhan. One of his names was uh, Balram's one of his names is Duryodhan Guru. Duryodhan was a Shisha. So why would he do that? Well, there are multiple reasons. One of them is that Balram serves the Lord in various ways. And some of the ways in which he serves may not appear like service at first glance. And say, for example, when Yashoda Mai is taking a stick to beat Krishna, or when she's tying Krishna up, she's chastising Krishna, is she serving Krishna? It may not seem like that. She's dominating Krishna. But the flavor of the relationship is such that she serves Krishna by acting as his mother. And as a mother, she does everything that a mother should be doing, including disciplining her child. And Krishna loves that richness of relationships. Krishna doesn't just want people to be all his devotees to be submissive and offering respects to him. Krishna wants flavor, spice in the relationships that he has with his devotees. So spice often comes from difference of opinion, from opposition. So Balramji, he serves Krishna in various ways. And one of those ways is by opposing him. We know there is the concept of viryaras, where sometimes a devotee serves Krishna by fighting against Krishna. There are three levels of this. There is one, a devotee actually becomes a demon. That's Jai Vijay. They become Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu and other demons. Uh, and they fight against Krishna. And for, now Krishna fights against those demons. It's a dead earnest fight. This is not just like the fight uh, Krishna may have playfully with the Gopas in Vrindavan. It's a serious fight. There are universal ramifications of who will win the fight. And that's why the Devutas are anxious when Varaha Dev is playing with Hiranyaksha. But the point is the Lord, for them, if we, for him, although it's a serious fight, it's also a play. It's a Leela, Mausha Leela as it is called. Sometimes devotees actually become demons and then they fight against the Lord. Sometimes devotees side with those who are demoniac. Just like Bhishma, 
he was on the side of duryodhana although his heart was with krishna and he was shooting arrows at krishna at arjuna primarily some of the arrows were hit krishna and krishna would feel like they are flowers being offered to him that is also another flavor of virya rasa now another lesser known flavor of virya rasa of the fighting the rasa of the pleasure the flavor of fighting is when the lord himself takes an antagonistic role to himself and that is what balram does and this he does in quite a few past times say for example when subhadra is to be married should she marry duryodhana or should she marry arjuna so krishna and balram have difference of opinion but that becomes because that is a small family matter who she marries but there is a conflict over there why krishna likes it when when there is conflict then there is excitement if in a story there is a hero and there is no villain and the hero just lives happily ever after throughout the movie the movie will soon become very boring so krishna leela is the ultimate attractive story it's not a movie it is the ultimate reality but it, it for it to be ultimately attractive there has to be opposition and sometimes god himself takes the opposite role and when there is sparring when there is argumentation there is more flavor now similarly it is by taking the role of some of supporting one who is opposed to krishna balram ji enhances the virya rasa duryodhan was not such a great mace fighter he was good he was of course he was greater than most other mace fighters of his times but he was not a serious threat to bhima just after after being trained by drona and drona academy and graduating from it they were equals but bhima was physically more powerful and in that sense the odds were slightly tilted in favor of bhima but duryodhana's training in mace fighting we could say balance the odds to some extent they made the odds slightly more favorable toward duryodhan because skill sometimes trumps strength so in that sense the excitement of the confrontation of the fight between krishna's krishna through his devotee and the opponent of the devotee became more exciting more riveting and along with that there is another reason a deeper reason we could say that when krishna is uh, is supporting the pandavas it may seem that he is partial actually he is not taking the side of the pandavas rather the pandavas are taking his side and duryodhan is taking the opposite side krishna has made his side clear his side is surudam sarvabhuta naam he is the well-wisher of all living beings he wants to establish dharma in the world dharma samsthapana artha hai sambhavami yuge yuge he comes again and again to establish dharma so that there can be the good for everyone in the world but there are some people who support that cause who assist in that cause and others who oppose that cause so technically speaking if it analyzed from a philosophical perspective it is not that krishna has taken the side of the pandavas rather the pandavas have taken the side of krishna and duryodhana has taken the opposite side but even then krishna also remains duryodhana's well wisher krishna goes as a shanti doot and personally beseeches duryodhan to avoid the war krishna never has to do anything like that with the pandavas so he extends himself also but still from the external perspective from the perspective of optics it does seem that krishna has taken the side of the pandavas and that may seem to tilt the odds unfairly against duryodhan if god is on one side god is supporting one side then what is the chance of winning so balram ji in one sense takes the side of the op- side that takes the side of takes the opposite side the side opposite to krishna so as to again balance the odds and eventually when Bal- when uh, duryodhan is defeated through that what is demonstrated is that even if god himself is supporting you if you are against the cause of god you will be defeated you will be defeated so while well, ramji takes this antagonistic role to illustrate this lesson this important bhakti lesson that the yatriyogeshwara krishna that the verbal is krishna where is arjuna there is victory so the side of the those on the opposite side of god will be defeated even if they are supported by an expansion of god beyond that we say that when bhima is hit bhima hits duryodhan below the belt at that time balram becomes the voice of the world 
and he protests. Duryodhan also, of course, protests, and Burlam also protests. He says, This was unfair. And by this vehement protest, he gives an opportunity for Krishna to explain his actions. And Krishna says, Okay, if this is unfair, then what about all the previous things? Was his Duryodhana's disrobing Draupadi not unfair? Was Duryodhana's uh, trying to burn the Pandavas, even their mother alive, and not unfair? Was Duryodhana's trying to poison Bhima to death, not unfair? So, if they have been so unfair, then he deserves to be punished. Then they deserve to be punished. And Bhima did what was needful to punish. Another point that is important is that this match was rigged against Bhima. There was just no way he could win because. Duryodhana's body had been made invincible by the, by the blessings of Gandhari. It's like if you consider a rough cricket parallel, say one, a baller is bowling the best spell of his life, but somehow the rules of the game are rigged so that no matter how many times the batsman gets out, there's clean bowl, LBW, caught, stumped, the baller is always declared not out. And the baller is the the, the Baller is running in and bowling very well, and the batsman is not just hitting the ball all over the field. The ball batsman is also hitting the ball at the baller. The baller is not just getting exhausted, but also getting injured. This baller is doomed. So Bhima was like that. He fought and hit Duryodhana several times on his body, but there was no way he could even hurt Duryodhana slightly. And Duryodhana was hitting back, and Duryodhana was injuring Bhima. The only option for a baller in such a situation is to body line, to body line, attack the batsman on the body and injure the batsman, get him retired. So Bhima had to use that weakness. So Bhima hit below the belt. If his plan had been just to win by any means, he could have done it right at the start of the fight. But only when he recognized the match is rigged against him and there's just no way he can win in a fair fight. That's when he decided to use that particular strategy. Of course, he had cursed. He had taken a vow that he will break Bhima's, Duryodhana's thigh. But his plan was to defeat him in a fair fight and then break his thigh. And of course, Duryodhana had angered a great sage by his arrogance. When the sage has to, told him to avoid fighting, he just slapped his thigh to boast about his strength wordlessly. And the sage said, your very thigh will be the cause of your undoing and your death. So there are multiple factors involved in Bhima's action. But specifically, Krishna wanted to emphasize that through Bhima's opposition, sorry, through Balram's opposition, Krishna got to illustrate that things are not as simple as they seem. And thus, Krishna's subtlety in strategy is revealed through Balram's opposition. Of course, Balram continues playing the role of the skeptic over here and he walks away in a half. But he realizes that he cannot defeat Dur uh, uh, Krishna. So, in argument, his accusation that is unfair, Krishna had refuted that accusation of Krishna of unfairness. So, in this way, Balram by opposition gives Krishna an opportunity to explain his questionable seeming actions. Now, then go to the second part. Why was he so harsh with the Roma Harshi? So, here there is a different principle entirely. Balramji was on a pilgrimage. And he came to an assembly and Roma Harishan didn't get up, didn't offer respects. And it might seem outrageous that he was killed for that. Now we may say this is, this is outrageous. Okay, if it is outrageous, then not just the act of killing is outrageous. It's the idea that somebody could use this a kusha grass, a blade of grass and use that to kill someone. That itself is unbelievable. If we are going to approach this story through only our logic, then don't just reject the fact that, don't just question the fact that how could he kill? Or why would he kill a person who just didn't offer respect? Ask the question, how could he kill with simply a, a blade of grass? Uh, and, if, and if we say, okay, it's all mythology, none of them is real, okay, then if it's all mythology, then don't, don't bother about the morality of it also. That if you want to accept, if you want to really understand what is going on, then take the whole story seriously. That 
there is much more going on over here than the simple a simple one person being disrespected and that person killing that other person who did disrespect did offer respect no balram in this case is the original guru but of course he is in the mood of he is in the form of kshatriya over here and the idea is that uh, roma harshin was a brahmana and brahmanas were highly respected in society but why are they highly respected brahma janati iti brahmana they are expected to know brahman the ultimate reality and what does it mean if they understand that brahman the big is the biggest reality they need to offer respects to brahman in fact the respect that the brahmanas are given is actually given through them to the brahman the ultimate reality and if they don't do that if when the brahman personally comes and they don't offer respect and that indicates that they are actually not really brahmanas they are defeating the purpose of uh, the very purpose of being a brahmana is to know brahman and to help others know brahman but they themselves don't know brahman that's what their actions are showing if the supreme brahman comes in a personal form balram ji and they don't offer any respects so here what's happening is the idea the emphasis is on how uh, uh, how responsibly a person who uh, is receiving respect from society should be behaving that a person should be offering respects to those who are worthy of respect and if not then they can, they may be doing a serious disservice to society now even when balram kills he has the power uh, to immediately bring roma harshin back to life uh, we don't have that power so so uh, it's not an ordinary past time and then the sages themselves who are in that particular context they don't consider it unfair say so, no no what you are done is is fair but he was appointed as the speaker over here so what should we do they said whatever you tell says make his son the speaker the father lives on through the son and he does that immediately so and then roma so his son so the swami becomes a speaker so the point over here is that in that particular context the sages don't consider balram's action to be reprehensible even the person who is killed his own son doesn't consider the action to be reprehensible he doesn't become uh, anti theist or he doesn't become anti balram he speaks and narrates the bhagavatam in which this very past time comes and he doesn't he doesn't give any express any outrage or when give any any qualification because he doesn't feel it is needed so it's like sometimes there is a quarrel between the husband and the wife and the, the couple patch up but somebody th- third person from outside the family say hey, this is a terrible thing why are you patching up you, know, you should get back you know, file for divorce you know, seize the property of the other person so they have settled the conflict but somebody else is ex- exacerbating the conflict so similarly here we see that when romaharshin was killed that didn't create any resentment that didn't create any anger that didn't create any you know, hatred now we say romaharshin might have hated himself no by balram ji's merciful killing romaharshin was liberated so so in that context what happened was uh, was auspicious for him the way he was living he might not have attained liberation so easily but in dying at the hands of balram he attained liberation now having said this it's very important that from different less different past time different lessons are to be taken so sometimes scripture teaches through extreme examples and the extreme examples are not to become the standard they are to they are not to meant to become standard practices they are simply meant to become uh, dramatic examples of a normal or a standard principle that means that there is no precedent that has been set that because balram ji killed somebody who disrespected him we can go around killing uh, those who disrespect us not at all that is never the way the tradition has understood this particular past time so there are past times you know anukaran is to be done anusaran is to be done so from romaharshin's perspective yes if we put place ourselves from romaharshin's perspective we should learn to respect those who are respected but we cannot place ourselves in balram's perspective and think that i will go about killing no that is not the point 
so the right lesson has to be learned and the lesson over here is offer respect not be conscientious to offer respect like, like balram did like um, like romharshan and fail to do not that uh, be go about killing people who don't offer respects the way balram did that is not the lesson these are the past times where we cannot do anukaran we cannot do imitation it's just this appreciation through analysis and that is as i said not the standard being set so extreme examples are not to become the standard they are meant to reinforce the standard practice they don't become the standard practice they don't replace the standard practice to go to the other exam extreme example when ajamil is saved by the lord by one chanting of the holy name the lesson is not from there that shukdev was swami speaking this very past time parishit maharaj parishit maharaj doesn't think that oh why do i have to hear bhagavatam for 7 days at the moment of death i'll chant narayan and i'll be delivered no he doesn't take that extreme example as a standard he takes that extreme example as a dramatic demonstration of the mercy that is available to all of us and to access that mercy we follow the standard process he continues here intelligently for one who remembered the lord only once and that too incidentally the lord was so merciful for somebody who remembers the lord regularly how much more merciful will that person will the lord be to that person how to take the other example mahaprabhu was very strong with chota haridas he was very compassionate with uh, with uh, madjagai and madai who were who had done heinous crimes but he had delivered them and chota haridas did, did something which was just an infraction not even a crime and mahaprabhu was strong with him but then has that the example that is taken from the tradition no other teacher the has condemned any of the students all these were staunch followers of bahapur but they did not take that as a lesson that this is how we should treat our students they were so um, prabhupad said that i am not mahaprabhu i need all of you so we need to understand such difficult past times through the tradition the way the tradition is understood it so balram is teaching different lessons through different past times through the past time of duryodhan and supporting duryodhan he is showing how veer ras can be enjoyed by the lord and how even if god is opposed even if some god supports the one who is opposing god that the, those who oppose god will be defeated and through romarshan sooth he is demonstrating the importance of passing on respect to higher authorities when we receive respect from others in this way we can try to get a better understanding of lord balram's past times his multifaceted character and thus seek his blessings so that we can also uh, learn the life life uh, right lessons that we need for growing in our life towards the lord of our heart thank you hare krishna